Okay, so where are you located in uh, So Right now, I'm living in Paris. Okay. Um, I'm from Strasbourg, so the east of France uh, originally, but um, I, I, I found a, a job in, in Paris uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we moved there uh, with my wife. Fantastic. How do you like it? So, uh, I must say there is a, a great uh, indie uh, RPG community, community there, so uh, it's uh, very nice to, to be able to, to play games uh, as, as much as, as you like, there is really no, no limit. Uh, some great um, associations too, so, uh, so some some great um, places to 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 play. So you, you're never uh, stuck with, uh, hey guys, I've, I've got this experimental weird thing, and no one wants to play. Right, it. and they say, wait, what? Right, no, it's I know what you mean. Um, I have just discovered um, the the role playing group mm -hmm. in my local area and in fact it's we're all sort of discovering each other because only in the mm -hmm. last year has this lo this central location been established mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um it's it's really also i mean one thing i've found about um the swedish role-playing scene is that although everybody is coming from a very straightforward background they've only played okay. with one group um, or if, and if they go to the conventions, they gravitate toward that particular, you know, mode of play or that particular mm. game. But they're up for anything. They'll try mm. anything. I mean, young, right. old, whoever, they'll try anything. And there's no real resistance against mm. some strange way to play. They'll, they'll yeah. say, well, I guess that's how we do it this time. And mm. it's, it's really kind of a nice atmosphere. Um, yeah. And a lot of new people for some, this seems okay. to be a moment when younger and older people are saying, I'll try this. Sure. And it's, it's kind of a nice, kind of a, some very interesting things. There's mm -hmm. one fellow whose his first game role playing was Troll Babe. Oh, and nice. Another, and just the other week was actually uh, the game by Jared Sorensen and Luke Crane called Free Market. Okay. Which they had, uh, they had generated it. There's a story that's I don't even know all the details, but okay, it was very well funded. Oh, nice. And well, they and they went for a really high production and mm -hmm. put a lot of effort into. What if a non role player picks up this box and has no idea what they're looking at? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Especially since we're not trying to bring them into the hobby. So we don't have mm -hmm. to teach them about D and D standards and hobby identification or anything like that. They're not mm -hmm. going to have a war game and they're not going to have miniatures. Mm -hmm. What do they need to see? And so, um, and they, they got the funding. Well, what if, for reasons that I don't know and are probably, mm -hmm. probably complicated mm -hmm. and emotional, the project ended. Oh, so, um, and again, I, I don't know the, the, the thought of even trying to find mm. out a story of woe, sure. you know, I, it's like, no, I have my own woe. Um, mm. but they, uh, but they printed, uh, a thousand copies and okay. I thought, I thought there was more. I thought there was a lot of free market around, apparently only a, a thousand copies and in a really, really nice box with really nice production and pieces. And I have one. Because I got oh, nice. one, I got one when you know it came out, and I didn't think twice about it. I figured, but no, apparently I have this mm. precious thing. So um, anyway, it's very strange game, and mm -hmm. is has you know an unusual card mechanic. It's it's built so you can play it with ordinary playing cards, but of course it came with its own special cards, mm -hmm. and it. Uh, and it's all the characters, you know, have their short term and long term memories and they mm. lose their memories. That's why I'm bringing it up, because okay. memory is one of our themes for today. Okay. And it's it's done. So you're, it's a transhuman uh, post scarcity situation. Oh, OK, one of those. Okay. There's lots. Mm -hmm. It's one of them. And it kind of <clears throat> takes a very friendly approach. Mm. Um, now, I find it weird because the friendliness is based on Facebook. So everybody's oh, okay. connected and you can like, give likes and give gifts. Mm. And there's this stuff called flow, which is pretty bluntly status. 
And okay. so you can play the game very... The uh, Characters, non-player characters in particular, can be very passive-aggressive mm. and leverage oh, okay. the currency of flow against you. Uh, um, like, like in any social network. I exactly. Um, mm. But everybody has like a happy face about it mm, because it's course. all nice. We're all friends. And mm. so on the one hand, you could be playing the game extremely friendly and everybody's okay. friendly and the setting mm -hmm. is friendly and it is a post-scarcity and it is abundant and we can be whoever we want by reprogramming our bodies and our memories. And it's great. Mm. But it's very easy to see and I've, apparently in play, people mm -hmm. prefer if there are dystopic elements. Oh, okay. Not in the sense that there's some awful conspiracy, you know, somewhere that nobody knows about, but just the nature of the happiness itself has its mm. own dystopic qualities. Oh, and the, okay. the game allows that. And so, it's it's kind of weird. I've never really known whether I like it or not. Oh, okay. Whether whether the, the the happiness happiness seems naive. Okay. The cool dystopic aspects that are actually good social science fiction mm -hmm. I find very compelling. I don't know if there's a if you're familiar with a seventies novel by Tanith Lee um, called Don't no. Don't Bite the Sun, it's called. No. It's mm. perfect. Before any of this technology was available or even okay. conceived of, she nailed it completely. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's okay. just like we don't have to do all this. All the mm. technology and social media development, you know, academic papers wondering about, gee, why are people <laughs> passive aggressive on social media? Why aren't people happy when they can do this and that? You know, that mm. kind of thing. It's like, read the fucking novel. It's 100 pages. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's I get not it. hard. Um, and, but it's, it's really, that interests me about free mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. And then there's the true passive aggressive thing when all the players are okay. being passive aggressive against each other in the GM. So it's kind of an emerging di dynamic, kind of. Yeah, purely, exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. And and so exactly, there's almost a, there's kind of a kind of a admirable freedom in that you're going to mm -hmm. make of it whoever you are. That's what it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I suppose you could say that about social media too. Yeah. And the revelation of that is that we're not very nice. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, collectively, it's, it's, certainly. Um, and it's true also for, for any, uh, I'd say, social group in, in, in general, because, um, I mean, if, if, for instance, you, you if we're discussing uh, small social social groups, I, when preparing for um, our, our chat, I was reflecting on what makes... Um, French community specific, and it's a very small uh, group. So kind of like uh, academic. I'm, I'm I'm an academic too. So right. mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a in a, in a laboratory, you have to be friendly with your colleagues because you're going to see them for forty years. So well, I can be negative about that because I've seen <laughs> all the ways in all these ways that it can go wrong, mm -hmm. and I at this late stage. Uh, I confess that the careerism of academics hasn't done it any favors. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I can get that. And the, uh, in fact, the word professionalism has become completely binary. Mm. I mean, or, or bipolar, right? There's professionalism that I think of as a positive thing. And sure. then everybody, the way the word is used professionally, Mm. Um, is almost always in the negative sense. Yeah. Not derogatory because this, they're saying, oh, but I'm professional. You're saying mm. you're being anti-intellectual and mm. an asshole. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, uh, so anyway, I can be, I, I appreciate this point and I think it's important. It's exactly mm. also what I wanted to talk to you about because of, okay. obviously, the Forge. Okay. Um, and so we had... It, it, it started as an extremely grassroots thing. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. has its origins in uh, a couple of places, one of which was actually an email, a, a mailing list that okay. was uh, uh, the, for Sorcerer. Yeah, your uh, first version of Sorcerer. Right, of so there's very, uh, a very, uh, very positive set of interactions among people mm -hmm. whom we didn't know, anybody knew. We didn't know each other. So okay. that was exciting. Right, it's 1996. <laughs> okay, this is exciting. 
right? Wow. I'm 11 at the time. Oh, right. So <laughs> the, um, you know, I, I was bootlegging, you know, space on my graduate mm. school, you know, <laughs> my graduate school internet um, for this. And um, then we had the the several of these these ancient style not usenet but really just one one graded step like a web page okay. you know that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of, of versions of of online communities um no notifications okay no i mean you subscribed but you didn't get emails for anything and that information went nowhere there was no okay, advertising okay. You know, okay. it's, it's, the, the, my joke is that when people talk about the dark web now, okay, and then I ask what that is, and then they describe it, and I say, "Wait, that's that's the internet." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, isn't that isn't that like what the internet is? And, yeah. and then yeah. I realize that they're completely socked into their platforms. They don't mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. any interaction with the internet except through the platforms and the interlinked notifications and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so they're not used to the idea that you are adrift. Yeah. Well, anyway, in that circumstance, the only, there was no infrastructure that created community at all. Okay. So okay. the only community who had was what people said to each other. Okay. I don't want to idealize it. Mm. Um, because the, uh, the unconstructed aspect of it meant every negative behavior could have disproportionate power okay um, so i ran the forge with a very strict eye toward blowtorching everything oh, i considered okay. to be passive aggressive behavior mm -hmm, standards mm -hmm. of behavior that people had learned on usenet and now considered normalized mm -hmm. um and so staying on topic it wasn't you weren't there to socialize you weren't there to hang a, ver right? a very very vigilant moderation then oh absolutely in fact mm -hmm. it's notorious People, okay. people either loved it or they bounced off it and screamed and okay. screamed and screamed. Yeah. I even did something that I, I, in retrospect, I really am quite happy with. I had, I made a special forum that, mm -hmm. um, that I don't know, I, I gave it a derogatory name. And oh, okay. if you, and so I said, I never delete posts, whatever you okay. put in here, if it does, it's, if I have, you know, had it with you. But whatever you put in there, I'll just put it in there. I'll just oh, move okay. the post over there. So if anybody wants to read your bullshit, they can go over and look at it there. Mm. So you can't complain that I've banned you. You can't complain that I've deleted you. Um, I just don't think you belong in this discussion with that kind of nonsense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, the, the thing is that I want to get at, though, is that mm -hmm. although this worked out very nicely... Then there were other intrinsic factors, and I'm curious about, I mean, I, I dread seeing them occur elsewhere. I dread it. I don't want it to okay. happen to other groups. Oh, okay. Um, and <clears throat> one of them was status games in the community itself, mm. um, some of which I didn't know about because I'm in, kind of an idiot in some ways, and one of them okay. was, for example, the number of posts that you had made, the number of comments and posts oh, you made, yeah. appears by your name. It mm. was a number. You're not going to believe me, but I never even noticed that number. I didn't even know it was there. Okay. I mean, it, it, I never I never even, I mean, it's right there, posted next to everybody's name, but I, mm. I didn't know it's so, because mm. I'm an idiot. And so it was only years into it that I realized that people cared very greatly. That if they saw oh. that somebody replied to their post and that guy had 2,000 posts, they were scared. You know, they were, they were oh, well, you know, I can't complain. I, I have to take what this guy says. Mm. And, um, and I realized that people actually, that to many people, this was, they knew that. This was just how it was. Mm. And they, you know, they, they, they benefited from it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I'm completely naive about that entire dynamic. 